Hi everyone, this is Rob. So what's the topic for today's video? I want to show you how you can park your CNC spindle in the same spot every time when it's done running in Toolpath. First, here's a quick little video clip of my machine running a quick and simple Toolpath. Notice where it stops when it's done. This is the default right out of vCard Pro. Here is a second example where I added a command to the end of the Toolpath to raise it at the top of the Z-axis. Important note, this would raise to the exact same spot if the Z was set to the plywood base there or to the top of a 3 inch piece of wood. And now a third video where instead of raising Z to the top of the machine when finished, it is moving the X axis far to the left and the Y axis to the back of the machine to get it out of the way. Here's a screenshot of the control software on my machine. I'm using Linux CNC, but that is not important to the example. Pretty much every CNC conceptually will be the same. For this video, I'm not touching anything in the Linux CNC settings. To make sure this will work on your machine, the same way I'm doing it here, you need to make sure you're using both G53 and G54 coordinates. Now some of you are asking, what is G53 and G54? Most of the time, users think only about the XYZ coordinates for the part they are working on. Notice the grid inside the red box on the screen. This is the usable work area for my machine. For this machine is using its own XYZ coordinates to calculate that grid. That set of coordinates is G53. Now if you notice that white outline shape at the bottom right of the screen, that's the part that we cut. It has its own XY coordinates, and those are the G54 set of coordinates. And here is basically the same shot, except it's diagonal now. You can see the Z axis height on there too, since it's looks like a cube now instead of just a square box. Uh, you notice that white line that goes from the bottom right to the top left? That's that last video you watched where it parked the spindle uh, at the very left back end of the machine. So this is the G-code that was generated by vCarve Pro. All it is that little box that cut when we looked at the video before. It starts out with comments always, which we're not going to worry about today. Then there's always a header and a footer. The header ends right here. So this part is generated every time for every part you ever do G code for. The same always. Then here's what actually cuts the item we showed there, the that little box. And then down here, that ends, and here's the footer that runs every time, no matter what you're doing. It generates that code. So when I did what I was doing, that first video, the Z popped up to 0.8. That's that first video. So let's comment that out. And what I did on that one is G53 and Z0. Remember that Z0 is the machine's coordinate system, not the part's coordinate system. On the part, that would take it down to the base of the part. On G53, the machine coordinate, it goes at the top of the Z-axis. The third video we saw had G53, X0, and Y30. And we need to comment this one out again because it'll take us right back to 0, 0 for the part again. The nice thing about G53 is we run that, put that comment in right here, that not comment, that command right here. The next command, if you had like G0 here, that goes back to your G54 coordinates, your parts coordinates, not the machine's coordinates. So it doesn't, you don't have to manually switch back and forth. You put G53, it's for that one line only, nothing else. So that's those three videos, how we did the G code for those. Next, let's go look at how we actually change the post processor and vCarve so that it'll put this at the end every time instead of manually changing it. So the first step of editing the post processor file is actually finding the post processor file. It can be actually a little hard to find. So first I'm going to go to my C drive. And I can see I have a folder here called Program Data. Notice how that color is a little different around that folder? This actually is marked as hidden, so you might have problems finding this. So to fix that, go to View up here on Tab, click Options, and click View again. And then there's this little folder here called Hidden Files and Folders. Check that little button there, radio button, called Show Hidden Files and Folders and Drives. Once you have that, then it will show up where you can see Program Data. I'm going to open that up, 
go down to find Vectric, Vectric, VCAR Pro. Here's all the versions I've had over the years. Go to 9.5, because that's what I'm using right now. And there's a col folder called PostP. I've only got two files in this folder. The stock way is it has, I made this folder called Vaults, it has all these different post processors for every machine out there you can imagine. I didn't want to have to have, have that list when I scroll through my list of post processors on vCarve, so I just made a folder called Defaults and drug everything in there except the ones I want to use. I have two profiles I use, one's for Rotary and one's for XYZ. We're going to work with this one, so I'm going to make a copy of it. I'll rename that to test. But doing just renaming that to test is not enough, because if we actually try to open vCarve right now, it'll give an error. Because inside this folder, I don't know why it took us down the bottom, but here's the post processor name, and that's the name is the same as the other one I just made a copy of, so it's going to have two with the same name, it will not work. So I'll put the word test there, right there. Now, if we were to save this, I could open up vCarve without an error. So here's the file that it builds everything with when you're post-processor. There's a lot of stuff in here. I don't know what m much or even most of it does. Variables the software programmers use. We're looking for, well here's the header, we talked about that before. There's all that comment section that I showed briefly, and then here's the actual commands that it does right before it puts in the the tool paths we generate. Uh, here's that one I mentioned, it stops for three seconds. And then after that would start the actual code. We're going to look for the footer. And there we are. So here it is, and before it says usually G0.8, well that, that's a variable that's using in vCarve, you can change that from 0.8 to whatever. I'm going to put, I'm just going to delete that row for now, since this is a test, and we're going to put quotes, the same format they have there, G53 Z0, fix that that way, and now we're going to save it, we'll close it and save it when we close it, yes. Now I'm going to open up vCarve, I already have vCarve open, I've got to close it because it actually loads this when it opens up. So if I don't, if it's open, it's not going to see the new files appear. So first you have to close it and open it. And, and I've already got a tool path called test over here. We're going to work on that. It's pretty simple. Cut depth a hundredth of an inch on the line it cuts. Name test. Calculate it. Close. Now I'm going to save that tool path, but I'm going to change the tool path to test right there. Save toolpath. There's already a toolpath named that, so the old one I'm going to copy over it. Gives me a little message that you're copying over a file. Now let's go to that folder and open up that full file. And what do you know? G53 Z0. So that's how you do that. I hope this video will make using your CNC a little easier, automating these processes like that. If you've enjoyed this or found it helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Thanks everyone.